Hello wonderful person and welcome to Europa, one of the moons of Jupiter. Now a very recent announcement uh, from NASA made a lot of astronomers very very excited because basically they have finally been able to show that this beautiful moon actually very likely has liquid ocean underneath and they've been able to detect uh, really interesting geysers and plumes of water coming out of the inside of this moon. Now in today's video we're going to be talking about Europa and we're going to discuss some of the details that we know about this particular moon and why the scientists at NASA were so excited about it. Welcome to What The Math. And to talk about all of this, we're going to be using Universal Mach Square and we're going to be using a simulation called um, Solar System with all of the planets and all of the moons. Now, specifically, I actually want to obviously take a look at Europa. So we're going to zoom into Jupiter and you'll notice that uh, right around Jupiter, right here, there is these uh, various moons orbiting around it and four of them are known as Galilean moons. The smallest of these Galilean moons is right here and it is of course Europa. Now, the interesting thing about Europa is that we've actually suspected liquid water for quite a while, but we've never really been able to prove it. Back in 2012, um, the NASA scientists kind of sort of saw the water coming out of this uh, beautiful object, but unfortunately, they weren't really able to um, scientifically prove that it was actual water. But this time around in 2016, they've seen enough pictures to actually finally completely and um, confidently say that, yeah, there's definitely going to be water underneath of this um, uh, sort of surface uh, ice because of several reasons. One of these reasons is, of course, that um, for this moon to have such a very smooth surface, the only explanation to it is that there is something liquid underneath. The other explanation is that the only reason why there is almost no craters on the surface is because something is actually changing the surface ice. So somehow this surface ice is changing and restructuring itself every a few million years. And once again, the only explanation is that there's got to be some kind of a liquid underneath. And the third explanation is based on the observations um, made by the different probes that were orbiting around Jupiter. And um, when the uh, extremely strong magnetic field of Jupiter interacts with the area around Europa, the actual interaction between the magnetic field and whatever is inside Europa uh, signifies that it has some kind of a water-like structure beneath it. So using uh, the interaction of magnetic field with whatever's inside of this beautiful moon, um, the NASA scientists were able to kind of estimate the amount of water and also obviously the fact that it is very likely to be liquid water. Now, Europa itself is actually not very large. If I were to com compare this object with our own moon, it's actually smaller. It's actually much, much smaller than the moon. There's our moon, there's Europa. Obviously, because of this, it also has a lot uh, less gravity and is a little bit less dense as well. Um, so all in all, this is a pretty interesting object, but um, it is essentially a water world. A world uh, filled with a lot of, a lot of water underneath. Now, how much water? Well, if you were to basically scrape off all of the size and then all of the water underneath it, uh, which you can kind of see right here, uh, what you'd get is a kind of a liquid bowl that's about this big. So it would be a bowl of water that's about 872 kilometers in radius. It is essentially uh, practically half the size of Europa and it's about to crash into Europa because I didn't really place it in a very stable orbit. Um, but essentially this is how much water there is on this moon. Um, in comparison to Earth, which only has about this much water, which is uh, a bowl that's slightly smaller, actually it's only 692 um, kilometers in radius, whereas this is 872. Um, it is definitely a lot of water. So Europa not only has a lot of water, but it's actually has really, really deep oceans that are un underneath all of this ice as well. The oceans here we think are over 100 miles in depth, which is uh, something like 10 or over 10 times bigger uh, or deeper than the oceans um, on our own planet Earth. And there goes my water. It actually flew away from us. But of course, like every other object in the Jupiter system, uh, Europa receives quite a lot of radiation. As a matter of fact, living here or even having a colony on top of this uh, moon would be very, very dangerous. The radiation here is deadly. If you were to stand here, even for a day, you would very likely die from radiation poisoning. And unfortunately, this is why on the surface, it's very unlikely that there's actually any life. But there is a possibility for having life underneath of this ice because um, all of this radiation would not actually 
and reach the water underneath of it. And um, underneath all of this ice, there's actually water that may even contain free oxygen because we have detected oxygen orbiting around this planet in a very, very thin atmosphere. So there's actually a little bit of um, atmosphere here. As a matter of fact, uh, the atmosphere here, even though it's not present in this simulation, we're going to edit manually, um, is essentially... Um, there and, and not only is it there but um we've detected free oxygen in it which is very very unusual normally free oxygen is very rare it's very hard to find it because it always gets um chemically connected to something else something always takes oxygen and basically removes free oxygen molecules and one of the reasons we have so much oxygen on our planet earth is because of life so pl things like plants, things like algae, they produce free oxygen on our planet. It's uh, produced by life. So what exactly produces oxygen on Europa? Well, we don't really know. I'm, we have suggestions, we have ideas, but for all we know, it might actually be life underneath of this planet or underneath of this moon that is. I keep calling it planet, even though it's not really a planet, it's actually a moon. But how would this life get all of this energy? Because basically it's covered with this ice shell. Well, because it is so close to Jupiter, because it's so close to Jupiter, it receives uh, something called uh, tidal energy. So because Jupiter is so close and because it has so much mass, Europa is always influenced by Jupiter's gravity. And here we can even simulate this in a game by going into simulations and enabling tidal heating. And if you enable tidal heating and go into um, temperature right here, you'll actually see that we now are receiving tidal power. And this tidal power basically makes things on the inside rub against each other and create a lot of friction, a lot of heat, a lot of warmth, which is also so why um, this moon actually has uh, geysers coming out of it. Basically, it spills out water mostly because of this tidal power. And this tidal power is actually enough to not only initiate life, but support life underneath of this as well. But of course, Jupiter also has other effects on this uh, beautiful moon. And one of these effects is these uh, scratches that you see on the surface. These actually have a name. Uh, they're known as lineae, which is Latin for lines. And this is actually formed because um, Europa always faces the same side of Jupiter. Where are you, Jupiter? Uh, always the same side and because it always faces the same side it's basically tidally locked to it and it's actually this side this side is always tidally locked and it's always stretched sort of this way and because of the stretch these um, lineae are created and uh, it's essentially just broken ice it's stretched broken ice that is caused by the um, gravity of jupiter but I guess one of the main reasons why the scientists were so excited about these plumes coming out of this um, beautiful moon is not just because we know that there's liquid water now, but because we now can actually have a mission that is a lot easier to execute where we could actually launch a satellite that passes very, very, very close to the surface of Europa. And as those plumes come out, it can actually have a chance to capture those plumes, uh, the water plumes and then analyze them for essentially content. So maybe this way we'll be able to actually find out if there is life in the water underneath Europa. The mission before that was actually planning to not only land on Europa, but use a very, very complex drill to drill inside of the ice shelf, um, essentially melting it, and then uh, put a submarine on the inside of this moon. And uh, this was a very, very complex mission, sort of beyond our capabilities right now. But maybe in some future, specifically in the next decade or so, we'll be able to launch it. But this type of a mission, using a very simple craft that sort of orbits around um, the moon and then tries to capture uh, the molecules that are coming out of the surface, coming out from those geysers, and then analyzes the water molecules as they come out, would be a lot easier and a lot um, cheaper to execute as well. So this is why NASA scientists were so excited about this finding. And one such mission, which is actually going to be um, launched in 2022, uh, is going to try to do just that. It's actually going to have a flyby of Europa. It won't really be orbiting like the New Horizons mission you see right here, but it will have two flybys. Um, and this mission will be launched by the European Space Agency and it's going to be called Jupiter Icy Moon Explorer, also known as JUICE. So this mission to Ganymede is going to actually uh, have two flybys of Europa and will hopefully have a chance to analyze the uh, water vapor that's sort of um, orbiting around this moon. 
And so, oh no, this is actually a pretty exciting uh, finding. It's actually very, very interesting what we're going to discover about this moon in 2022. Uh, but I guess the most important thing is that uh, we now have at least two candidates for um, essentially life underneath the surface um, with uh, all this liquid ocean there. One of them is, of course, Europa. And the other one is the moon of Saturn known as Enceladus, and we'll probably be talking about this particular moon in some of the future videos. And it actually doesn't really look like that. It looks much better than this. And anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and I wanted to kind of give you some facts about why this finding is important and what we actually know about Europa right now. And of course, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to share this video, and uh, in the comments below, do you know any other facts? about Europa, if so, mention them in the comments so that we can actually maybe talk about this in one of the future videos about Europa. Now, meanwhile, what I'm going to do is, well, first of all, let's actually see how, how small Europa is compared to our planet Earth. This is how small it is. Now, what do you think will happen if we actually accidentally, sort of, kind of, collided with our planet Earth? Well, because there's so much water, I have a feeling that, basically, our beautiful planet Earth is about to experience a very, 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 very interesting and very, very large ocean that is going to be formed on the surface here. So as soon as the temperature cools down, we're going to see what it all looks like. And anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Give me later. And as always, bye-bye. And following all of these collisions, you can actually see the tsunami wave moving across the surface of our beautiful planet. You can kind of see the water increasing on all sides, and I think it's going to be actually covering the entire planet. If this is actually what's going to happen in a few seconds, uh, I'm going to be pretty impressed, because that is definitely going to be a very different planet from what we're used to seeing um, every day. And even though its mass only increased by 1%, it now has something like double the water it used to have before. Which of course means that Earth is now a water world. I don't really... Oh, no, there is a tiny piece of land that's about to disappear. But yeah, I don't really see any other land in here, which means that we have now created a water world Earth. And so there you go. This is what would happen if Europa actually crashed into our planet. It would essentially eliminate everything. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.